unutmadan şeyi anlatayım. I don't wanna forget. Two months ago, iki ay önce Türkçe anlatayım. Burada birisi işleri kötü gittiği için çatıya çıktı, intihar edecek. Ve aşağıdan şöyle bağırdılar ona. Gel iki ay sonra şampiyon olacağız. Şimdi intihar etme. İki ay sonra edersin. Şampiyonluğu gör ondan sonra. Adam şey, intihar etmedi. That's true story. That's a true. really true, true story. Exactly true story. Yes. European football is broken with the same teams winning the same trophies against the same opponents in almost every season in almost every country and it's only getting worse. Bayern Munich win their 10th consecutive uh, Bundesliga title simply sensational stuff. Resulting in a toxic cycle where a select few teams now hold almost all the success, power and attention all of which is depriving us of new footballing stories which to me has always been what football is truly about. Luckily, last season saw a few underdogs with a chance of glory. So I went on a journey to document their story, their people and their culture and show whilst winning isn't everything, we need different winners in football to remind us of why we love this game. This is Once in a Lifetime. There are seven cities in Turkey with populations exceeding a million people. Yet the country is dominated by one city in particular. Whether economical, cultural or political, if it happens in Turkey, the city of Istanbul, despite not even being the capital, plays a significant part. So much so that in the build-up to a recent election, the country's longtime president Recep Erdogan admitted İstanbul'da teklersek, Türkiye'de tökezleriz. And so when Erdogan's political party lost the Istanbul mayoral elections for the first time in 15 years to a newcomer called Ekrem İmamlu, Erdogan demanded a re-election. İmamlu won the re-election as well. And this same Istanbul dominance applies to the country's favorite sport. Since the beginning of football, Istanbul has always been the obviously dominant city. Such as their dominance of the 61 titles won before the start of last season, only seven have left Istanbul. The, the Galatasaray, Beşiktaş and Fenerbahçe teams were so big that nobody could battle with them. The championship was always decided between them three. In fact, for the first decade and a half of the Turkish league, no non-Istanbul team even got close. The three Istanbul clubs, they had this hegemony, this kind of dominance over the Turkish league, and they presented it as if it was common sense, as if it was natural course of life. They could buy anyone's players, they could match fix, they could, like, the refs would defend them, like, they could do anything until the 70s. When a club from Trabzon, a small working class city from the Black Sea region, made it to the first division. Trabzonspor came in and broke, no, destroyed that hegemony. The mail went crazy. It went crazy. In 75, 76, they immediately won their first championship. But it wasn't just once, it was like... 76, 77. Six titles in oh, yeah. a decade. That's why they cannot, like, the audacity. 78, 79. Audacity. That's our character. 79, 80. It was like a David Goliath thing. When in, 80, when in like 80. an 81. You ask this Istanbul club supporters and whatnot. And then so, in 84 you won it. In 84, once again, yeah. They do not like us because we had the audacity to not only question, but destroy their dominance over the Turkish league and the Turkish football. Because we just kept going and we won six, six trophies in a short span. And did it with local kids from this town. And I read that like, the, was it the entire squad was from the city? Yeah. Despite being not the second, not the third, but the 30th biggest city in the country, it was Trabzon's football club who became the only side capable of taking on the Istanbul footballing giants, earning them the nickname Black Sea Storm. And it was like invincible Arsenal team. In the first 30 minutes, we were sure we were going to score and then dominate. O 70'den diyeyim sana 84'e kadar ya. Hep İstanbul kulüpleri, İstanbul kulüpleri buraya gelip de beraber kalırsalar çok büyük iş. And to this day, with the exception of Bursa Spor in 2010, Trabzonspor has been the only non-Istanbul team to have won the Turkish Super League. Actually, there is this great chant Trabzonspor fans sing that says attack so they will understand you. And I think that pretty much sums up what people, what these people have to go through to be recognized. And it's that mentality that inspired a fan base way beyond the city. I was born and raised in Ankara. It latched on to, to, to people from across Turkey. I've been always supporting Trabzonspor. Not only people from Trabzon. No, I have no connection to the Black Sea. Being a football fan, you identify yourself with a club. You see your values and your character in it. It's my, I guess my protest vote against the status quo, you know, standing against the tide. Everybody around me were supporting the biggest Istanbul teams and I felt like, 
you know, I, I have to stand up. People from here, they try they, the audacity again. They don't, they don't think like, they don't ask themselves if they could do, do something. They just go for it. Remember Imamlu, the first man to beat Erdogan's party in more than a decade and a half? Well, he was born and raised in Trabzon, and like everyone else from the city, adores his local team. We, as Trabzon sport and people from Trabzon, we refuse to know our place. And perhaps that's how Trabzon got its nickname. We are the stubborn city. We're known for, being, for having a short fuse. Trabzon character. I'm not talking about the club, I'm talking about the... the people. It's that character is... Quite a strong thing. There is this culture of what they call delikanlı. It would literally translate as a crazy blood. So you might have realized we are very strong-willed and short-tempered, yeah. Where's that come from? I'm not, it might be the weather. Ne de inatçıyız. Bizim altımız deniz. İşte dağ. Biz rüzgarda kalıyoruz. Bize cehran çarpıyor bizi. So it is a lot of mountains, a lot of fog. The fog in Trabzon is, is infamous. Rains all year. If it's not raining, it's foggy. It does affect how people are or their character, doesn't it? And whilst this stubbornness could be interpreted as hostile, locals insist it's more to do with their passionate way of being. We get really angry really quickly, but that's because we are so passionate about it. We use it in extreme, extreme ways. And those extreme ways can be seen in every local passion, from their seafood to their hazelnuts. We are really proud of our own produce, so we are the place for hazelnuts. We put hazelnuts in our Coca-Cola. To a more concerning passion in a city known for its stubbornness. Personally, I'm not a big gun fan, but there is a big gun culture in this city for some reason, yeah. Trabzon Trabzon maçlarında gol attığımız zaman bile evlerden atılırdı, o köylerden atılırdı. For example, my grandfather used to sleep with both his guns under his pillow. I mean, is that a really good mix with the city that has the shortest temper in the country as well? It, it, it might not be, but it's very different to the like southern uh, US gun culture. It's very different. But whilst their passion for weaponry may reflect their aggressive side, there's an equally warm side reflected in another passion. Trabzon'da balı severler. Evet, bir tutkudur. Yani çünkü çok güzel çiçekler oluyor yaylalarımızda. Onun için kaliteli ballarımız e, oluyor yani. But even in this passion, there's an intense side. Thanks to the region's famous or infamous variant of honey known as Delhi Bal. The crazy honey can put you in a coma. Evet, kesinlikle. Yani onun fazlası zararlıdır. Onun için adı üstünde Delhi Bal. Yani e, vücut düzenini ister istemez e, tansiyonlu mesela baş dönmesi ama yani e, genelde Trabzon'un kökeninde bir delilik vardır yani kesinlikle. And it's that mix of sweet and crazy that is creating an extremely hospitable people. We love people. We love to show off what we can do. Everybody that wants to like the city gets embraced. But it's the extreme and unique ways that people express their two biggest loves, the city and the club, that is most fascinating. For the city, it's through a number. 61 is the license plate code, the postal code of the city, and somehow it became a symbol. The number of people in this city is like a kimlik. I see our fans when we are 6-0 ahead. They want us to concede the goal so that the match will finish 6-1. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah, that's real. People pay extra to get a phone number that starts or ends with a 61. So this is your restaurant? Love it, love it, love it. And did you open it in 1961 on purpose or is it coincidence? <laughs> They took a picture of, of an ATM machine that the numbers were all there, but the number one and number six were all faded because <laughs> everyone's pin number is something with 61. So the bank had to put, put a note there that was saying like, And for the club, it's through the colours of claret and blue, or Bordo Mavi in Turkish. I've touched every concert with Copenhagen. 
I've never seen a city so decked out with the colours of the local club. Is that particularly strong because of the time we're in, or is this normal? Oh no, it's, it's normal. It's normal. Bordeaux Mavi is the essence of the club. So you will see the, the colours everywhere. In our defence, they're beautiful colours. And just like 61, the locals embraced it in extreme ways. So there was this jean brand called Mavi, and right next to their shop, someone opened the shop and named it Bordo. So it would be Bordo Mavi together. But even with their audacious ways, stubborn spirit and unrivaled passion, in a changing world, even Traps and Sport couldn't keep up with the Istanbul clubs forever. I mean, football changed, hasn't it? And Money, yeah, globalization. Yes, and we had to adapt to a new world. A lot of money was poured into football. We could not compete economically with Istanbul clubs. When you look at the economy, when you look at the scale. Economically, we cannot, this city, this is a small city. It's a miracle that Traps and Sport is in the almost in the same league with the other uh, Istanbul players. But just as the 80s saw Traps and Sport lose its best players to clubs who could offer more, that same decade saw the city lose much of its population for the exact same reason. There wasn't any possibility back in the 80s to, to earn a living wage. It was really hard work. So a lot of people tried their luck outside of Trabzon. Trabzon has a huge diaspora. So like, uh, probably only in Istanbul, you might have more than a million people from Trabzon. Not only Istanbul, but also... Every place, the world. Turkey, look. Turkey, the world, every place. Almanya, Belçika, Hollanda, France. My parents left in the 80s. You're from the Netherlands. I'm from the Netherlands. I was born and raised in Rotterdam. My father's from Trabzon. I was actually born in Germany. You're from the Netherlands. I'm from the Netherlands. I was born and raised in Rotterdam. My father's from Trabzon. I was actually born in Germany. So you've come all the way from Dusseldorf. Yes. How far have you come for this match? 3,700 kilometers from Belgium. The people who are educated, who have, who have good jobs from big cities of Turkey, they didn't move to Europe. Basically, the people who left, they left from regions like Black Sea, this region. And so now, wherever you are in the world, you're never far from a Trabzon Sport fan. They say that among the Turks in Europe, Trabzon Sport may be, you know, the number one team. All of which has led to their club slogan. Bize her yer Trabzon. It means everywhere is Trabzon for us. Trabzon is everywhere and everywhere is Trabzon, mate. We travel anywhere, we go to any matches away. We play as if we are the home team. And this truly is the case when on occasion they've played home games in Istanbul that saw crowds of more than 60,000 in claret and blue. If you're in Belgium, it's like Trabzon for us. Why? You, in Belgium, you have amazing teams, Anderlecht, club, which, this is different. It's a lifestyle. Dolayısıyla Trabzonspor, onlar için, dışarıdakiler için bilhassa, it's the love and the passion that our, our fathers that gave us. Memleketle kurulan bağ, yani ana vatanla, baba eviyle, baba ocağıyla kurulan bağ. Some people um, pray and they feel themselves close to their lost ones. I don't believe in all that, so I think the connection that I have with my father, with my late father, is through Trabzonspor. And despite the club falling behind in the mid 80s, by the mid 90s, Trabzonspor had somehow scraped back to fighting for top spot. I mean, in 95, 96, we fought back. And what happened in 95, 96? I remember 96. That was a traumatic experience. 95, 96, again, leading this league, we were just dominating the league. Then, uh, like four weeks before the season ended, yeah, we were five points ahead. We lost against Vanspor. Man, it was. What are they called? Vanspor. I've never even heard of them. <sighs> Vanspor was a relegation team. They were just battling relegation. I still remember the name of that goalkeeper, Stingachu. It was just we couldn't beat him. We we couldn't beat him. We lost. We won the next game, and the penultimate game was at home against Fenerbahce. I don't want to talk about this. With two games left. I don't want to remember that day. Don't ask me about that day. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just, I'm sorry to ask, but. That was 5th of May. Remember the day? Yeah. If you win. If we win, it's pretty much guaranteed. You're going to be champions. Yeah. But even if we tied, we were almost assured to win the league. So we went up 1 0. They drew it 1 1. And they scored in the 80th minute in the, on the top of my head 2 1. And we just lost the league. In Trabzon, after being ahead. And. People, people killed themselves in the city. It was, it was grim, man. It was, it was, it was dark. They took their own lives. Yeah. Because you didn't win the title. Yeah. I think there's three or four fans committed suicide. Şampiyonluk yarışıp da 
e, kaybettiği yıllarda intihar eden e, ve hayatını kaybeden çok taraftarı var Trabzonspor. Orada ben sahadaydım, uçutmam. E, o sis şu anda olduğu gibi sis bir anda Trabzon şehrin üzerine çöktü. And whilst the ability for a set of football results to cause such tragedy may seem almost unfathomable, when you speak to fans you realize there's a set of unique reasons the club has such an effect. Firstly, there's locals' almost existential connection to the club that goes beyond the cliches of regular fandom. Burada insanların başka hiçbir tutkusu yok. Hiçbir şey yok. Sadece Trabzonspor. Ya futbol dünyanın her yerinde büyük sloganlarla anlatılır. Futbol biraz abartmak demektir. O yüzden Trabzon özelliği başkadır. Ama burada abartılı cümlelerin altının dolu olduğuna emin olabilirsiniz. Ama Trabzonspor'un hastalığı başka bir şey. Gerçekten bir hastalık gibi. Bir ara insanlar e, Trabzonspor'u mahkemeye veriyordu. Hastalığımın sebebi o diye. Benim annem 93 yaşında. Onun bile tansiyonu Trabzonspor'a bağlı. Fans have sued the club for, for emotionally affecting them this much. They wrote letters to the high government officials. <gülüyor> you guys are crazy, man. Close, close, close because it makes me illness. <gülüyor> no, no problem about cancer. A problem Trabzonspor. Secondly, there's the region's unique relationship with the darker themes in life. Here, sadness and happiness is together. Cenazede biri fıkra anlatabilir pekala, gülülebilir. Thirdly, is the burden of their once great past. Trabzon bundan 100-150 sene önce imparatorluğun önemli şehirlerinden biriydi. Trabzon used to be the capital of an empire called the Pontian Empire. They spoke Pontian Greek. Yeah, actually the patriarch of the Orthodox Greek Church. He's a Trabzonspor fan. O kaybettiği güçten gücü arıyor aslında bir bir bakıma futbolla arıyor. Öte yandan Trabzon. Add to this the yearning for friends and family lost to migration. People, especially the diaspora, misses the city a lot, and the people miss them. And a scandal of heartbreaking proportions still fresh in people's minds. Ukraine is not that far away; it's right above us. So when Chernobyl happened, that radioactive cloud came here as well. Most of the tea in Turkey is from the fields of Trabzon and Rizem, and the Turkish government didn't actually warn the population, and we drank that tea. And all of that led to a cancer in every house in the Black Sea region. And all of this considered perhaps explains how football grew to mean so much. There's a melancholy to Trabzon and yeah. Trabzon sport. Yes. There's like, I wouldn't call it sadness, but there's like an understanding that life can be hard yeah. as much as it can be fun. Would yes. you agree with that? Yeah. With the fog coming off the mountains. Oh, exactly. With the, the, exactly. the suffering you've yeah. had in history. Yes. And that suffering is reflected in the stands, with the fans' embrace of Arabesque music in their chants. It's called Arabesque because it's got Arabic, Egyptian uh, vibes to it, but the lyrics are very sad, very uh, melancholic. We ran out of days, yeah. we gave our lives for, yeah. for the sake of cloud and blue. And that, that's in your narrow streets, the song that yes. you guys sing. Yes, about the, death, exa exactly. about rain. Yes. You're telling me that's happy. Yes. You're yes. telling me that's something yes. to be joyful about. Yes. Neden? Çünkü hava iyi ya şimdi. Üç dakika sonra hava bozuk. Yani hayat ve ölüm iç içe. İyi ve kötü iç içe. Yani böyle bir şehirden bahsediyoruz. Futbolu da tam da böyle. Even if football was a mix of the good and the bad, after 96 it still provided mostly heartbreak to traps and sport. With more close but failed title runs in 05 and 09, before the city was introduced to an entirely different level of pain, thanks to the 2010-2011 season, otherwise known as... The stolen season. We were nine points ahead. Uh, at the end of the first half of the season. You were leading most of that season. Well. Yeah, yeah. The Fenerbahce magically won 16 of their 17 games in a row. The season ended, 82 points, uh, and Fenerbahce became champions on, on, on goal difference. We lost for one goal difference. One. Yeah. And then like a month or two later, a big scandal broke out. Oh yeah, I knew it. Really? Yeah, I knew it. I've never felt so robbed in my life. I saw how they were playing, some teams were playing against Fenerbahce. I was like, okay, they're getting paid, man. They're getting paid to play like that. This is a conspiracy. No, no, no, the big, the big chief, big president, Aziz Yildirim from Fenerbahce went to jail. There were a lot of tapes, a lot of video footage. There's evidence for at least eight games that were fixed. And whilst UEFA banned Fenerbahce from European competition and sent Trabzonspor to the Champions League instead, the Turkish government said the evidence was obtained illegally. The charges were eventually dropped and the Turkish FA still declared Fenerbahce champions. We felt not only robbed, but also insulted because 
there was no justice afterwards. And so what happens when an already emotional fan base goes through a combination of heartbreaking failures mixed with enraging injustice, a decade of chaos in the stubborn city? That's the point of time where I think we lost our shit. And so whenever, wherever injustice was felt, the people of Trabzon did what they do best and refused to know their place. From the club president locking referees in their dressing room overnight. Another game, the refs were really bad and he decided it was a good idea to lock them in the stadium, not let them leave. The president of the country, Erdogan, had to call up and say, hey, let him out. To the Sally Dulce moment, which saw the player, fed up with poor refereeing, take matters into his own hands, literally. He takes it from his end, he falls on the ground, yeah. takes it from the ground, says, off you fuck, and then, <laughs> and then he starts, and he sees the red card himself, and starts walking like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what he did, that red card, represented so much, and something so important. <laughs> that when they arrived in the airport, the team, the fans were waiting for, for them there, thousands of them, with red cards in their hand. <laughs> This statue is dedicated to that moment, to him. <laughs> I haven't seen no statue. There's a street but... named after him. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the new feelings towards Fenerbahce. The rivalry we had with Fenerbahce turned into a animosity. Right, I've heard that. It's different now. It's like almost at the level of Galafena, would you say? I would say it's worse. Since that stolen season, almost every time the two have met, there's been controversial moments. There was a few games that could not be finished. From violent pitch invasions, to the Fenerbahce team bus being shot on the highway outside of Trabzon. The attack, which happened as they travelled to Trace Bon Airport. People outside of Trabzon asking like, why you guys aren't this tense with this? Like, uh, and I remember someone saying, man, what would you do if, if there was a thief in your home? So that was the feeling. It's a mixture of anger, rage and very profound sadness. <laughs> You know, I told you about the audacity we had in the 70s and the 80s. I think we have never been forgiven for that. So as much as we say it's been 38 years, I feel like... It the... hasn't. It hasn't for me. Okay. 2010, 2011, we won the title. Everybody in Trabzon thinks we are champions. That belongs to us. But we don't have the trophy. We, don't, we didn't have the celebration. We didn't have that explosion of, of joy. But then, a decade after the stolen season, Trabzon Sport took the 2022 season by storm. And with six games remaining, only needed one point to win their first official title since the 80s in a match at home against mid-table Antalya Sport. So Copper 90 and I hit the road again to see just what goes down when a city so intensely attached to its club finally gets to celebrate a league title again. All right, well, here we are in Trabzon, my first time, and uh, within an hour I've been blown away. I was warned before I got here of the fanaticism the locals have for their local football club, and only their local football club, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for this. There is not a building, not a street I haven't seen covered in claret and blue. The first thing we saw as we got out of the airport, our taxi, which was covered in a giant Trabzon Spore flag. In his article for the Blizzard, Patrick Ketty said that the city's dreams, hopes, and identity is wrapped up in this club. But this is this is something on another level. You've got a Trabzon Sport bus stop uh, decked out like a dugout. It's almost like a theme park for Trabzon Sport. It's like the city was almost built just so that they could celebrate a club. But it wasn't only on the surface where Trabzon Sport was prevalent. It's behind every nook and cranny the club somehow appeared. Whilst walking through the market, we've just been told behind this little store is some kind of Traps and Spore uh, museum almost because one of the ex managers owns this store. What was his name? So, this is his time as a player, yeah. this is his time as a director. Yeah. But when he was a director, this is when they won everything. Yeah. From a legend of the dugout, we were next off to meet a legend of the terraces in Ahmet Firdin, a journalist known to all of Traps on since he was a kid, thanks to his passion displayed ahead of the last time the club won the title back in 1984. <laughs> What was noticeable about Ahmed's feelings on the almost certain title wasn't the benefit to himself, but to the younger generation, who didn't get to experience what he did in 84. 
And that same sentiment was one we found in everyone we spoke to, where it became evident the title win meant very different things depending on your age. My age is 53. I saw the gördüm ama bizden sonraki nesil genç nesilin görmemesi çok şeydi. I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've never lived it, so I don't know how am I going to react. It's kind of an age-dependent feeling, I think. A lot of people who are older are going to feel more relieved. People my age don't know this. Like the older generations, they do. For the younger, younger generations, I think it's really a huge, you know, Explosive. ecstatic, explosive, you know, feeling that you know you're becoming a champion. At... But there was some explosions everyone was insisting on avoiding. Şimdi bu şu anda Trabzon'da yedide yetmiş herkes silahlanmaya hayır. Yani baştan sonra. No. The club, the Trabzon Sport Football Club, actually had to do a campaign. They're asking people not to celebrate with guns. Şimdi burada çok insan öldü. Ha, mermi uçtu zaman bir daha geri geliyor. Adam yorgun mermi. They did an amazing video with very famous and very dear people to Trabzon Sport fans that had passed away, saying that we cannot go there to, to see this, but you shouldn't come here neither. Mustafa, kurşun sıkmayın. Instead, the club is encouraging fans to express their excitement at the squad's final training session on the eve of the match. So, of course, we had to be there. <laughs> what did he say? And it wasn't just regular fans emotional on the eve of the title, as we found from speaking to one ex-board member, Nevzet Aydin. How big of a deal is this? It's, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, we haven't celebrated the championship for the last 38 years. So it's... I can't even start expressing how huge it is for the, for the family, for the Flavos. You're, you're emotional, I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aydin, a self-made multi-millionaire and star of Turkey's Dragon's Den, was on the verge of tears while chatting with me and was living proof that no matter what you did or achieved, if you came from Trabzon, the club pulled at your heartstrings. We came so close so many times that I mean, I, I, I, I don't think I will believe, you know, before I get the cup in my hand that, that we have the championship. You won, but you're only one point away. Yeah, I mean, we have four matches left, one point away. But you don't think... We'll see tomorrow. It's, it's, it's, it's still early to, to talk about the, the <laughs> celebrations and everything. Do you remember 96? Yes, I was 11 years old. How painful was it? So I was still a child. I was like, okay, our time will come. But uh, we didn't know that it's gonna last so long. 38 years. Like in 2019, Pauk won the league in Greece after 34 years. And Atletico Mineiro from Brazil won the league after 50 years. And I was like, I said, please God, it's gotta be our turn now. So please. And uh, now we're standing here, D-Day. This city has been waiting for that explosion for decades. I'm just done with the Istanbul Championships. Football needs a championship for Trabzonspor. We need to show them that the country is bigger than, than the three Istanbul teams. Because there is a whole region that is just ripe to show you how, how much it means to us. All right, well, we've just got outside the stadium and it's incredible. You've got every bit of Turkey wrapped up into one, dancing around the stadium in this chubs on rain. It's absolutely beautiful, but to top it off, I've been told, there's actually people who've been camping overnight. 
From there we grabbed a quick bite, quick drink and quick dance before surprising our cameraman Amir, a Trabzon sport fan from Istanbul, with his first ever ticket. Joking? No, of course not. And headed inside for historic night. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people. So we're going to experience it to the fullest. So you take the lead. Are you safe? Do you think that's home? Do you think fans will relax? I, I, me personally, I won't. Every time we, we, were, we were close to a championship game, the, it, it sometimes became too much for us. You so screwed it up, let's be honest. We screwed it up. Yeah, we screwed it up. Okay, but a draw, a draw you'll be relaxed. A draw is good. We, we just need one point. But will you be relaxed? I won't. I won't. Because this should be the most calm I have been in decades. Because all you need is a draw. Yeah, yeah, but still, but still, everybody's thinking about everything that can go wrong. Because Tom's us for everything that can go wrong, will go wrong. You can't script it. You can't script it so, so, so bad for Tom's us for sometimes. Because you've dropped quite a few points the last few weeks, right? It's, it's yeah, yeah. The last couple of weeks, draws, draws, draws. We lost the game against Riza Sport. A perfect storm is just brewing. The unthinkable always happens. The things that if, if they were written in a movie, you would say, no, this is too cliche. It happens. When we take a lead, there's always like a, like a, like underbelly uh, nerve because we have seen it gone wrong so many times. I mean, everybody in the stands, uh, I can already picture it. Everybody is going to be nervous because it, it has been so long. We wear our heart on our sleeves, so a lot of people are just going to bite bite their fingers off of the you know of the of, of the stress of the game. No, but this is Antalya sport. What could go wrong? Trouble for everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Turkish FA rules stipulate that a pitch invasion during the 90 minutes can lead to an abandoned match and all three points handed to the visiting team. All of a sudden, Trabzon Sport's inevitable title celebrations didn't look so sure.
Things could erupt. Things could erupt. We are we are passionate. We always show. We have always shown our passion. There's going to be a little bit of a bad moment in the game. The whole city, the whole stadium will just explode. And the tempers might flare, might flare. couldn't be a better setup for a win. You get to win it at home and all you need is a point. But you've got a history of fucking up constantly. Is there a chance you fuck it up this time? No fucking way. Look around you, man. Look around you. Have you ever seen a city so together? Men, women, older, younger, several generations, it's all together. Have you ever seen a synergy like this? Like, have, we, have you ever seen a city that deserves to win a league title as much as this one? I'm asking you, man. I mean, look around you. Look around you, man. With all honesty, I don't think I have. This is going to happen. This has to happen, man. The fact that, you know, a team that is not part of the establishment that is basically winning it with less resources. That's a more beautiful story in my eyes. I think it's vital that people take interest in other teams, not just the big teams, of course. We want diversity, we want new teams, we want new stories, we want new cities. Because otherwise, we're really going down the money rabbit hole. Thirty-eight years. It it it hurt. It hurt a lot. Football needs championship outside of the big teams because there are so many more stories to tell, so many more fan bases to learn about. When a team outside of the established teams wins, the emotions that just explode out is just so different and we see the best of football and at its core, that's what we want. Man, you're gonna see when we win this thing, people are gonna go to cemeteries. That's, that's what's going to happen, because they want to share this with their lost ones that weren't here to see it. You never got to see a championship with your grandfather. Do you think there's something kind of poetic in the fact that the first season that finished after he passed away, you got to win it with your newborn? They say Trapson is everywhere. Is, is Trapson in, do you think Trapson's in the afterlife as well? You're gonna see the true meaning of the sentence for us everywhere is dropped on. Club, the club, the club. I don't know how you 
Australia has ever seen their team. 